Hello and welcome to Socialism, the weekly Marxist podcast from the Socialist Party. Sri Lanka is headed into presidential elections in the midst of a government deadlock and the aftershocks of the horrific terror attack on the 21st of April. The United Socialist Party will be contesting the elections to give a voice to the fight back against all the press and issues facing workers and oppressed people in Sri Lanka. The April bombing allowed racist thugs to raise their heads, and both economic activity and workers' campaigns ground to a halt. We'll hear a short update first, followed by an interview about the complicated situation on the ground in August and the key political battles ahead. In this episode of Socialism, we discuss how socialists in Sri Lanka are fighting back. This interview with Sri Tunga Surya, Secretary of the United Socialist Party in Sri Lanka, was recorded in London in early August. It begins with a discussion of the repercussions of the horrific Easter terror attacks on Christian targets and moves on to the general situation in the country at that time. The date of the country's presidential election has now been announced as November 16th and Siri's name has been registered as a USB candidate. No fewer than 20 candidates are in the field and the campaign has begun. In this interview, Siri puts forward the position of the United Socialist Party on all of the main issues that arise. Details on the programme of the USB will be carried on socialistworld.net, the website of the Committee for a Workers International. The World Socialist Organisation, which includes the United Socialist Party in Sri Lanka and the Socialist Party in England and Wales. Thanks for that. James Ivans here from the Socialist Newspaper Editors Department. Now, Sri Lanka is a country with a proud history of struggle against imperialist domination, for national rights and for revolutionary socialism. But recent events have reignited national and religious tensions, long used by the old British masters and today's Sri Lankan capitalists to try to keep the workers and poor in check. This episode, we're talking to Siratunga Yayasuriya, General Secretary of Sri Lanka's United Socialist Party, which is the sister organisation of the Socialist Party in England and Wales, both part of the Committee for a Workers International. Hello, Siri. Hello. In previous podcasts, we have discussed the appalling terrorist bombings and the divisive response of the Sri Lankan state. Now, I understand the atmosphere in Sri Lanka is making our work more difficult, including through attacks by bigoted Buddhist monks. Could you tell us a bit more about what things are like on the ground in Sri Lanka now? You see, as many people know, Sri Lanka came to uh, find the end to war in 2009. May. So nearly 10 years has gone past from that. Mm -hmm. But all of a sudden, this year, April 21st, Easter Sunday, there was a terrorist attack by the extremist Muslim group. Mm -hmm. Seems to be a member of the IS, which we don't know anyway. That's what they're claiming. And uh, so with that incident, Really, entire country sh- shook. Mm-hmm. So, because people thought, what the hell of the happened to the peace? Mm-hmm. Because we are enjoying the peace. I mean, really, how I see the situation is really last ten years since the end of the war, the capitalist class, neither that party or this party, the ruling parties, has not done any serious work to really strengthen the peace process. Mm-hmm. I mean, in a way, how I describe, people thought there is a peace because there is no war, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> really, there are no war doesn't mean there's a peace. Sure. So that's uh, how I see the situation. So with that, really, the new situation has emerged in the country. The government brought the armed forces into the street. So many security steps have been taken, mm-hmm. introduced newly. And I, before I go to the other thing, I like to say, after this government came to power, present UNP government with the coalition with another bourgeois party, so uh, the UNP, what party is United that? National Party, together with Sri Lanka Freedom Party, SLFP, 
And, and sorry, the UMP is that a single nationalist party? Yeah, no, that's the main capitalist party. I okay. mean, from the both those two, UNP is one of the key, and at the same time, SLFP, Sri Lanka Freedom Party. Okay. Right, and those parties two came together and formed the government section of the SLFP, not whole SLFP. Okay. And formed the government in 2015. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, they won a, fighting against the previous Rajapaksa regime, mainly based on a Sinhala Buddhist Shawnist forces. Mm-hmm. So they defeated and these people came to power. So from there, some certain small steps they took up to, I mean, establish a democracy in coma, you know, in the, in the press freedom up yeah. to a certain extent yeah. and bringing back the army into the camps. You could not see much of the army moving around especially in the north, even the south, they won. But with this incident, that's what I won't tell you, army came back to the streets, mm. right? So army was not happy. They were pushed back to the camps. Sure. Because they were sort of, I mean, what do you call, they got a grip in the society, they were controlling, they said, we are looking after the people and so on and so forth. The army saying, no, because you sent us there to the camps, that's the main root cause to, I mean, this incident. So they they got the opportunity to come back and play their muscles now, you know. Sure. So this has to be recorded. So with this 421, we call in 9-11, this 421 in Sri Lanka. So that was the bombing on yeah, Easter Sunday. Yeah, bomb took away four, April, April uh, the 21st, Easter yeah. Sunday. You see, with that time, in economy collapsed really. No, that, was, that was because of it or before it? Yeah, no, after. after Soon it. after that, you know, because the country was not functioning normal. Sure. Schools were closed nearly more than six weeks. Really? Completely. Not a single school. I mean, even the first week after this thing, I mean, the, the factories, or nothing happening in the country. People got fear, we don't know, we are going to happen again. Mm. Right, that kind of fear. Anyway, so with that, I mean, tourism, because one of the key industries in Sri Lanka is a tourism. Sure. Many countries said, no, don't go. They say, bar on the tourism. So mm-hmm. because the tourism is collapsed. So due to these reasons, economy has come down from the something like 4% to 25 Oh, no, that's growth. It's growth, eh? from, it's, growth has dropped. From Your growth throughout the GDP. Yeah. Right? GDP growth rate has come down to 2.5 at the moment. Let me just ask then about the situation right now. Yeah. So you mentioned that the UMP came to power with the Sri Lanka Freedom Party as well, promising to introduce more democratic freedoms, but also to curb the racist Buddhist groups that the last singular nationalist leader, Rajapaksa, had allowed free reign. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and that they've been able to raise their heads again after this attack, yeah. is that right? Do you see, I mean, I explained one hand the army. In the other way, the Buddhist monks also got to be groomed to enter. Sure. Get control of the power. They say politicians cannot do in this situation. And uh, anyway, among the, among the most of the Buddhist monks, there was a big campaign against the Muslims, which happened, I mean, 2011. There was a big attack led by one of the Buddhist monks mm-hmm. and killed three Muslim youth down south, you know, and had a rampage in the entire Muslim village. Mm-hmm. The USP is the only party without any exaggeration. Of course, many parties condemned the attack and so and so forth. Sure. That they had some picket lines and statements in Colombo. But we organized the cycle march, a cycle march in support of the Muslim from Colombo to that particular area called Darga town, Darga town, right? So we went and with our flags and other things, with the, we got the permission from the police and everybody, you know. When we reached more than two thirds, I mean, Buddhist monk came and attacked us. Mm. I mean, had a big of thing. I don't have time to go into that. So we had that record. But why I'm saying that to compare that situation to today, I will come that to later. So. With this, Buddhist monks he started campaign again with the the Muslim extremist guerrilla the sort of groups attack on the Catholic churches in the Easter Sunday. Sure. So then, Buddhist monk got the big hand and to come campaign 
and the come to the streets and campaign no no you see no to muslim don't give any room to muslims and there's a campaign not to visit their shops not to have the tea from their shops mm-hmm. they not to have any whatever the garment or compete of the muslims you know i mean doctors muslim doctors Muslim doctors who are having the private practice, mm. right? No single people visiting because they really? feel, I mean, the idea has been established without any scientific evidence, but it's been established that don't take, they are giving poison to us. Giving poison? M- medicine. Mm. Especially to the female, sure. not to get a baby. So mm-hmm. I don't know the exact word, right? Yeah. Like that. So because of that, I mean, Muslim doctors... almost they have closed down their shop i mean with this situation what i am saying now this anti muslim campaign has really has become a leading campaign at the moment in sri lanka where the usp united socialist party i mean not in a position to do whatever the thing we did in 2011 not in a position to do that again yeah 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 right because so dangerous sure that time of course there was a dangerous but still we did it we had the attack we faced to the attack by the buddhist monk mm. the anti muslim campaign has reached the peak right the in peak. the country yeah before 2009 during the war period against the tamil rebels the uh, the state terror and everything but still the usp and other i mean left the groups of the parties were able to come out to campaign to defend the rights of tamil speaking people sure the usp especially putting forward the right of self determination has to be granted you know in a, in a very very difficult situation so compared to that to here now we are not in a position to start any public campaign because situation is that uh, that bad that dangerous you see because this vicious uh, the anti muslim campaign so taking place the, the the situation is the, the reactionary fervor which has been whipped up as a result of these bombings yeah consciously by the right wing political parties by the state by the singular nationalist thugs and by other groups as well is now so dangerous that it's impossible for workers organizations to openly campaign against divisions like this for the moment this is a very important question why and how this happened after the war you see since this unp came to power with support of the section of the slfp sure right the opposition key opposition to this government is uh, the, the the party led by rajapaksa rajapaksa yeah rajapaksa yeah. he has formed his own party he is a he is a strong slfp person sure but because slfp the led by the present president so because of that he organized his own party right so this is a this is a split away from yeah, the slfp yeah yeah the split split away from the the, so the slfp, the SLFP which towards, the government. towards the more right sure so they have no what you call slogans or program against the unpa coalition okay right the neo liberal policy so i am of the world bank right they, they don't have anything right they are, they were great followers of those things yeah right so now they took up this pro communal singular thing using the slogans against the present government saying these people trying to give more consciousness to tamil more consciousness to the muslims so that's the only slogan they have so they have succeeded in the entire south i, I say in control by the i mean this reactionary communal forces that's why i said this a very important question I mean, before this bomb attack on the April, teachers were on strike after mm. a very long period. Successful strike they had February this year, and the thousand rupee demand for the tea plantation hill country workers. That was thousand for the wage to go up to a thousand rupees, was it? Or? No, thousand rupee because they are getting only about five. They are daily paid. Okay. They are daily paid. They are getting about five hundred and seventy-five per day. Right. Okay. That's about two and a half pound. Two and a half pounds. Yeah. Two pound fifty a day. Yeah, yeah, about one hundred pounds. Okay, right. So they, they are main demand is we, we need thousand rupees per day. Okay, that's about five pounds. Okay, right. So because in spite of the trade union leaders, they are betraying, but the tea workers, tea Tamil workers, they form their own committees, and spread to one tea state to the other tea state, and get together and they were launching 
thousand rupee demand campaign. And this was despite the trade union leaders trying to hold it back. Yeah, that's right, right, the betray. So, so hang on, just to interrupt, you, you said there was this strike of the teachers and the education workers against privatisation in the schools. There's the strike of the Tamil tea plantation workers. I think there was a third strike as well before the terror attack. Yeah, Is that right? yeah, yeah. You see the teacher strike on their own demands, on the salary anomalies or something. Mm -hmm. And the same time on their transfers and the promotions and so, so many things is not given. Up to certain extent, they had the solidarity to the plantation workers. The okay. plantation thing is, I mean, came out spontaneously from the, the ordinary workers, right? Mm -hmm. And other side, the students, Excuse the me. university students, were in a continuous campaign. Almost every week they come to straight against the privatization, mm -hmm. against giving the, the license to the private medical college, sure. right? and other demands that the, the, what the students face. These campaigns are taking place, but with this, the bomb attack on the April, everything pushed back. So this bomb attack in April, yeah. you know, you had a, a major strike movement in the plantations among the agricultural labourers, you had a major strike movement in the schools among the teachers, and you had the students entering struggle en masse as well. Yeah. And this bomb attack has set it all back, and that's a real gift to the ruling class in Sri Lanka then. Yeah, I mean, this incident, as always Marxists and lies, this individual, the guerrilla or the extremes attack, the finally capitalist class is used those mm. things against the working class students and the whole other oppressed people. That's what the graphic thing happening in Sri Lanka. Not only that, now this government, the government who came to power, the liberalized so many laws and so on thing, now they are uh, brought to this, uh, what you call, at, to the parliament with the introduction more powers to the terrorist prevention act, you know. Okay. It's not yet passed in the parliament, that is in the agenda in the parliament, especially after the bomb attack, they said we need this power to make sure the people don't get any that kind of things, the what you call dangerous situation. But that's not true, is it? Because there was evidence that they knew about these attacks in advance, wasn't there? <laughs> yeah, 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 that's true. That's true. I mean, this is this will take me a long time. It's especially more than a month ago, Indian intelligence service raw. R.A.W. Raw, mm -hmm. the research and analysis wing of the Indian government, yeah. they won't Sri Lankan government. There could be some terrorist attacks is going to take place. Mm -hmm. I mean, President say I didn't get the message. Prime Minister <laughs> say I didn't get the message. <laughs> Inspector General of Police and the Defence Secretary, both are comes directly under the President. Sure. Right? They said, I, we convey, sir, message to you. This is the kind of thing happened. They said, no, no, I can't remember. <laughs> what, what they have done? This president, Maitri Pala Sirisena, right, he, he's not a UNP, he from the SLAP, sure. who became the president. Now what he did, he sacked IGP and the, his own secretary of the, the defense secretary. He sacked mm -hmm. them. He sacked them? He sacked them. Okay. Right, any so I mean, so nobody can say. I mean, they they, they knew, and uh, not only that, the president himself was in the Leo on that particular week. Yeah, he was in some Philippines or somewhere. Oh, I can't right. remember. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, we were talking about the strikes which were taking place mm. before the bombing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right now, you see, especially this uh, the poor tea plantation Tamil workers, they are. Thousand rupees demand still going on, but it doesn't get the same rhythm mm -hmm. what they had before. You see, now we have this first week of August and end of last week of November mm -hmm. or the first week of December. According to the constitution of Sri Lanka, the presidential election should take place. Okay. Nobody can stop it. That's by law. Well, there has yeah. to be uh, an election. There has to be, whether you like or by not. By the beginning of December. Be. Right. So now, just only three months to go, mm. just only three months ago, because of this deadlock situation, because Prime Minister and the President, President has more power, the Prime Minister, a little bit second to him, mm -hmm. and they, they don't meet each other, they don't discuss, Cabinet, there's no collective decision taken by the Cabinet. So the country is in a deadlock, really, you know, okay. not moving forward or anything. 
So because of that, I mean, people, the plantation, or the teachers, or other, or the students, many people thinking, let's country go to the presidential poll and take a bit of new beginning, you know. Mm -hmm. So in a way, country is pushed to find some solution through the presidential election. I like to say nothing significant change is going to take place. Which capitalist party candidate win in the, this thing? Yeah, sure. Uh, it's not going because both capitalist parties, the same, same program, neoliberal program, same IF and World Bank, and same communal, uh, the single Buddhist communal program, mm. right? So there's no choice, really speaking. From, from the perspective of the, yeah? the masses of Sri Lanka, or yeah. the, the workers in the poor of Sri Lanka, mm. like you say, the, the same singular communalist program, the mm. same bowing down to the World yeah. Bank and the IMF. Yeah. The situation, if the capitalist parties win, will not change for ordinary people in Sri Lanka. Do you think it will help the ruling class solve its problem with the deadlock between the prime minister and the president? Yeah, if the election, present election takes place, I mean, new situation come, new president will elect. And he will go for new parliamentary election and the new government will form. But still, as I said, there can be some change in the top, sure. right? But nothing serious is going to happen in the, the country. But people have been pushed by the singular communal campaign, anti-Muslim campaign and anti-Tamil campaign is a key mm. portion. So people are looking for which person is the best candidate for defend singular people, right? Sure. Right? That's, the that's the key at the Lanka. moment. So we are, the, I mean, one of the small party in Sri Lanka saying that, I mean, look at their socio-economic political program, there's no change, nothing, only there, even the communal thing, they're trying to, who can fool more people going to war? So our campaign, don't get fooled again and again, right? Yeah. So we campaigning, I mean, uh, from the left, and the trade union should come together with the program to win the demands of the working class and the students and the poor persons mm -hmm. together with uh, Tamil minority in the north sure. and the Muslim in the east and all other areas, you see. So very, very difficult because the unions also not prepared to take a stand because of this situation. They are divided. They are not meeting together to discuss I mean, at least the day-to-day program. Day-to-day -day needs of the working class. Sure. They are not in a position yet, even though we are campaigning. Let's form the United Trade Union Bloc Committee to discuss matters and take a democratic decision on behalf of the workers. So, uh, politically, they are much more weak. They say, no, we, we have nothing to do with politics, you know. The trade unions. Yeah. yeah. You know? So, because of that, our, our campaign, trade unions and the left come together, especially not only the socio-economic demands and the political demands, how are we going to find a solution to the Tamil national question? That's the key. I don't say one of the key. I think the important question Sri Lanka, the Tamil, the national, Tamil question. national question. Yeah. So we can't see any of the left parties, even though some of the left parties were talking about the right of self-determination in the past, sure. but now they are not talking. So only USP really, I mean, Maybe, I mean, some people say it's exaggeration, but it's in reality it is. So we are saying we should come to, I mean, programmatic agreement, right? How are we going to look into this matter? So that's our campaign. So if that fails, the, I think the USP, whoever, the forces we can get around, seriously we have to consider. Okay, so the USP is standing yeah. on the program of bringing together yeah, all the, the if trade fair, unions. There, if there is no, I mean, put it this way, if there is no any other solution, yeah. right, that is not our wish, right? Our wish is to get the trade unions and left forces together with the program. Sure. The question. If, if that fail, it's an election like president election, yeah. because that entire population is voting for the one president, yeah. right? So we may have to seriously consider of contesting. So the, the United Socialist Party would prefer that the workers' organisations, the trade unions and so on, were able to block together, yeah. come up, as you say, with a kind of programme to resolve these economic demands of the mass of the population, but also the national liberation question of the Tamils, the oppression of Muslims and so on. That should be relatively straightforward for workers' bodies, like the trade unions, which represent workers across the country, to do. But if they fail to do that, the United Socialist Party in order that there is some kind of representative for workers and the poor, 
will contest the elections. Now, you've contested, I believe, for the United Socialist Party, the presidential elections in the past, and notwithstanding the fact that you said that it is, in numbers, a relatively small party, the USP in Sri Lanka, the influence is quite great, because you came third, I believe, in their presidential yeah, well, elections. Yeah, that's true, that's a fight, yeah. yeah. And what about the situation in the north of Sri Lanka, the struggle for Tamil national rights? The political situation in the north, which is the Tamil homeland in Yeah, China. Tamil, political situation in the, in the people who are the north, you know, where the Tamil people live. It's really getting confused day by day. Mm. 2015, the key Tamil political parties, all everybody has come together, called TNA, Tamil National Alliance. Mm -hmm. They overwhelmingly supported the UNP, Ranil Maitri led coalition to come to power. The UNP coalition to come to UNP power. UNP and the SLAP you? coalition to come to okay. power. To defeat Rajapaksa. This is, okay. Rajapaksa is what you call... Uh, Who presided over the bloody end of the civil war, yes, yeah. Rajapaksa. He, he's a devil, he's a, you know, horror. So we have to defeat him. Mm. It is a burning demands of the Tamil people facing. What are the burning demands? Get back their traditional land is being used by the generation after generation of the Tamils. Get their own lands to them. Sure. Army is occupying huge areas in the north. Mm. The second is release all the Tamil political prisoners who are still in the prison more than something like 18, 19 years. No charges has been framed. Really? Right. That's one of the key promises which this government promised. Then finding the solution to the whole disappeared people. Mm. There are thousands of disappeared people in Sri Lanka and still people don't know where, are, where what happened to them. Mm. Because they, some of them are surrendered to army. Mm -hmm. Right? And uh, so give the list. Who are the people surrendered? Sure. I mean, these are the burning issues yeah. in addition to finding the solution to the national question. Right. Right. It may be complicated and so and so forth, but these are very concrete things what I said to you now, of right? Course, yeah, yeah. Withdraw the army from the north. Yeah. They have withdraw some small percentage, they have given the land some percentage. Mm -hmm. They have not found the solution of disappeared families. Now, after five years, after nearly five years, where's the TNA stand now? I mean, TNA has become, I mean, what you call laughing stock now. Mm. People say, what you have done? You said so many things, nothing happening. And still, unfortunately, the same TNA ladies going behind the UNP mainly. Mm. Right? Some section of the TNA, I mean, for example, provincial council leader, mm -hmm. chief minister, Vigneswaran, he broke away from the TNA about a year ago or so. But he also don't have any program. I mean, many, they are small groups, right, against the TNA, but no one producing any program. That's what we say as socialists, you see. Only way to, I mean, find the solution is getting together the forces, fighting forces in the north, sure. together with working class youth and the progressive forces in the south. Because many Tamil doesn't understand the single people in the south also suffer same way like the Tamils. Sure, yeah. But Tamil people think, no, no, they are all right. No, it's their single people is not all right. But because of they are going behind the communal campaign, they forget their own demands. Sure. The unemployment, the land question, water question, right? Education, health, they all are there in the South. Yeah. Burning, right? So because of that, I think the situation is coming more and more crucial that the revolutionary left has to intervene to the north and even though it's a bit difficult to convince those fighting layers, fighting elements to come and make a joint collective effort to, I mean, overthrow the capitalism in Sri Lanka. And so this program for the overthrow of capitalism in Sri Lanka, through which we could resolve this question of the Tamils having their own land, there wouldn't be the need for them to be oppressed by the military occupation in the north, for their lands to be held by the landlords and capitalist powers for their own purposes. You could also resolve the land question in the south and give land to small farmers in the singular south. 
And you've also raised other social questions like health, education, wages and so on. Unemployment. Unemployment. And these are general issues which affect the population across all of Sri Lanka, whatever the ethnic or religious label is applied to them. So what are the other key planks of the program the USP is putting forward? You see, when we start from the break from the imperialist bonds, that's one of the key. And other thing is to open up a new alliance in the radical left forces in the South Asian region. Mm-hmm. Trade unions and the poor person students come together. Because what's happening in, mainly in India is not outside thing. The Sri Lanka people is attacked to what's taking place in there. So, sure. so because of that, I mean, we, we, we have a program not only looking at the only Sri Lankan soil, we are looking at the South Asian sure. sort of, I mean, socialist federation. Right. Starting from there, then coming to national question and the health and education and employment and uh, the women's and the LGBT and disabled people, right, to get equal life, you know. Sure. Uh, right. And of course, tea plantation, because tea plantation workers, I mean, is a sort of second class citizen in the country. Mm. So they still confined after nearly 200 years now after British occupation, British. British brought them there. I mean, they're still occupied to their state, you know. Of course, they come they out, they go, state. and they this thing. But their life is in, in, inside, right? For example, hardly I can't see any tea planters and families are buying a land in Colombo or sure. Candy and become a very few who get some money from somewhere. Yeah. So, you see, I think we, we have to remove these barriers. Mm. They are going to their own school, state school, in the area, the they have their own small the, the hospitals. Yeah. They, you know. Anyway, the new generation among the tea plantation, young people, is really looking for that kind of freedom, you know, come out. You know, we don't want to get confined to the plucking the tea all the time. And so that's our parents has done that. That's enough now. Mm. Right. So, I mean, that kind, those kind of things is very key. But these series of specific social issues which can only be resolved on the basis of a program including nationalising the land, redistributing the land so that small farmers are able to make a living, nationalising the key, finance key houses, monopolies, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the monopolies, cancelling the involvement with the IMF, the World Bank, repudiating the debts to the big capitalist economies, not paying those off, and that would give you the kind of resources you need to end this segregation of the plantation workers, give the Tamils their own land sort out the unemployment question. And that program can be carried out by a mass struggle of the workers and poor in Sri Lanka. Okay, very okay. good. Very Thanks good. very much, Siri. And now we'll hear, as usual, some reports from the latest workers' struggles and news and campaigns that have taken place in the last few days. And back again with us is Scott Jones from the Socialist Newspaper Editor's Department. Hello, Scott. Hello. What's been happening in workers' struggle? So there's a big strike looming in Royal Mail. Postal workers all over the country... They're currently balloting for strike action over bullying, pay and terms and conditions. And there have been videos of these workers, you know, queuing up to send back their ballot papers right around the country. Their union, the Communication Workers Union, the CWU, they've supported workers who have already walked out to depots for a couple of years now over the same issues. Most recently at East London, just this week. Yeah, in Leitonstone. Yeah, almost affected our papers going out, actually. That's right, but luckily... They won the same day, so our papers could go out. That's correct, yeah, and it shows what can happen in a national ballot when you've got all the workers striking together over the same issues. If one depot can you know, can force management back, then imagine what thousands of these workers can do. Mm. It looks set to be a massive national strike, and of course linked to the fight is the demand for re-nationalisation of Royal Mail, which the Socialist Party calls for. That's a demand that is also supported by the workers, the union, and supported by Corbyn's Labour Party. What's been going on up in the north? In Hull, construction workers who are building a wood chip treatment plant have walked off the job on Tuesday in defence of trade union agreements and against blacklisting. Okay. So, Socialist Party member Keith Gibson, he's a plater who was put forward as a senior shop steward for the GMB union, but bosses refused to employ him. And that's breaking the national union agreement, isn't it? That's correct, yeah. Called the NAKI, which is negotiated between the GMB union, the Unite union and the engineering construction bosses, and they're meant to employ two senior stewards on every job. That's right, yeah, and the Unite shop steward who's put forward has faced a similar blacklisting as Keith. Mm. And Keith has told the Socialists this week, he said, it's blatant blacklisting. It's all now come to a head, and if we don't stand up against the bosses' breaches now, it'll go on to the next job. 
And as we speak, the strike action also continues on, currently in his fourth day. He went down, he spoke to them, he explained the situation, and he said, this is going to be an attack on the whole National Union Agreement. Every job you go on to afterwards, I appeal to you to take some action, and they took an immediate vote and said, yes, let's walk off the job. And that's the kind of decisive action which can really push bosses back. That's right, it's great. So now on to the national news and campaigning reports. Thomas Cook, the travel company, has collapsed. And workers who have been sacked on the spot have on their own time and expense, we've heard reports from all across the country, travelled to hotels, to airports, in order to help their former customers who were stranded by this sudden collapse of the company get back home. And I think what this shows is the instinctive solidarity and capability of organising action and whole processes organising economic activity that working class people have. And it shows that actually workers do have the capacity to run society if they so chose and certainly could run it better than the bosses who run this company into the ground yes. did. The bosses have made millions out of this. The chief executive has been paid millions over the past few years while he's watched this company go under. The hedge funds, they bet that this company would collapse and they're going to make £200 million. Pounds. 200 million. 200 million out of it going under. Meanwhile, the workers are going to get nothing. Thomas Cook, in fact, was nationalised in 1948 by a left-wing Labour government, along with the railways as part of taking the transport industry into public ownership. And the Socialist Party says that Thomas Cook should be re-nationalised. But this time, it should be permanent and it should be under the democratic control of working class people, under democratic workers' control and management. And that would allow you not only to guarantee the jobs of these thousands of workers who've been summarily thrown out on the scrap heap, but also to guarantee cheap holidays for working class people. So Labour Party conference has also taken place recently. What happened? Well, it was very positive. A lot of really good policies came through it, one of which was Corbyn winning a victory on his Brexit position. The Socialist Party says, however, that Corbyn shouldn't be appearing neutral, that if he's promising to go out and negotiate a pro-worker exit deal, which would be better than the neoliberal rules of the European Union, he ought to be saying, I will fight for that pro-worker exit deal in the referendum. Some of the other policies which Labour conference passed, number one, abolishing academies which are privately run schools in the state sector they take state money but they cream all the money off and it goes into the bank accounts of private companies and of course this is very welcome this is exactly the sort of policy the Labour Party should have the Socialist Party says they ought to go further and say that schools which are in financial distress right now should be setting legal deficit budgets which schools are allowed to do in order to avoid the cuts which are coming down the line from the Tory government to keep the staff on, to keep the schools in good working order and campaign to win the money back from this absolutely broken government who clearly could not say no to them. The second policy I'd like to mention is the scrapping of prescription charges, which again is very welcome. The NHS was founded as an institution which is meant to be free at the point of use and for a long time for most of the population that has not been completely the case, particularly when it comes to buying their medicine. And prescriptions are already free in Scotland and Wales? That's right, so it would bring England into line with those policies. And the Socialist Party says, yes, that's absolutely right, but Labour ought to go further and ought to nationalise the big pharmaceutical companies in order to guarantee a secure supply of cost-effective drugs to provide for free to the population. Then next, Labour conference voted to grant free personal care to all of the elderly. That's absolutely right as a policy. We think that should be extended to all ages. And the privatised and badly cut care sector ought to be brought back in-house and fully funded. Labour conference voted to end universal credit, which again is absolutely right. We've had comments on this in previous podcasts on the disaster that universal credit is as a benefit system for working class people. However, Margaret Greenwood, who's Labour's shadow work and pension secretary, has said only that she wants to stop the rollout of universal credit. Well, what about the people who are already on it? You see the Blairites on every pro-working class point, which comes out of Labour conference or the mouth of Jeremy Corbyn, immediately try and water it down and roll it back. And what this shows is that Labour Party politicians must become accountable to the working class. And that means measures such as mandatory reselection, so that the party ranks are allowed to choose who becomes their candidate in a general election, and also giving the trade unions an organised voice in the Labour Party as well. And finally... Labour conference committed to achieving a four-day working week within a decade. Now, this is something which we can all agree is absolutely spot on. We all want to have a longer weekend, more time off, less time under the cosh at work. But, of course, it's also worth noting that John Maynard Keynes, the capitalist economist, he predicted that by the end of the 20th century there would be a 15-hour working week for everyone. And he was absolutely wrong about that. 
And that was because, on the basis of private ownership, all the benefits of new technology and making workplaces more efficient, those go to the bosses to make more profits. They don't come back to the workers in the form of reducing the number of hours we have to work or increasing our wages. So in order to achieve this policy, Labour will have to go further in terms of its economic policies, rather than simply arguing for more cooperatives and a state sector to compete with the private sector. It needs to take the banks and the big businesses which actually employ people and command how money is invested in the country into public ownership to establish a democratic plan to provide full employment for everyone. And then you can have a four-day working week without loss of pay much sooner than 10 years' time. At last episode, we heard from some of the climate strikers. Yes, we did. We were out on the day speaking to climate strikers about what we think is necessary to take the movement forward. Now, I won't say too much about that because we had a little report last episode put out on the day that we've been on the climate strikes. Just a little update this week. There was up to 100,000, according to one estimate, on the climate strike in London. It was a swirling mass, is how our organisers in London described it, the demonstration on Friday. Up to 4 million has been estimated across the whole planet, so it's an absolutely enormous global movement, very inspiring. The Socialist Party took part not just in London, where you heard me reporting, but all across the country, and our sister parties in the Committee for a Workers International did so in other countries as well. And what we're saying is that system change, not climate change, the spontaneous slogan put forward by that movement, of course that's right, but what is the system change we need? Because system change is widely understood to mean simply regulating the existing capitalist-owned companies. Now that effort to simply write the rules to make them pollute less, that's failed for almost three decades. And why is that? It's because these companies make a lot of money out of it. They make billions, hundreds of billions out of oil, out of coal and so on out of polluting industries, that's an enormously powerful political lobby. So rather than trying to regulate them when they're simply going to buy their way out of it, what we need to do is break the economic power that they have, take them out of the hands of the capitalists, put them in democratic workers' control and management. So the system change we need is socialist change. Help us spread the word by giving us a five-star review and subscribing so you don't miss out. Don't forget to recommend us to your co-workers and friends too. Socialism the podcast has no wealthy backers. We survive thanks to the financial support of ordinary working class and young people. And we're proud of the political independence that gives us. If you like what you hear, help us take the fight to big business. You can make a regular donation or a one-off payment at socialistparty.org.uk forward slash donate. If you agree with the policies and actions the Socialist Party is fighting for, we need you. Join our fight for a winning strategy in the labour and trade union movement. Join the Socialist Party now. Send us your details at socialistparty.org.uk forward slash join. If you live outside England and Wales and want to join the fight for socialism in your country, contact the Committee for Workers International by visiting socialistworld.net. You can read more about Sri Lanka's United Socialist Party at lankasocialist.com. We also want you to send us recordings from picket lines and campaigns and reports of your activity. We also want your questions, comments and ideas for future episodes. Email socialism podcast socialistparty.org.uk Socialism is produced by the Socialist Party This episode we heard from Siratunga Jayasuria speaking to James Ivans along with Visay Priya and me Scott Jones Until next time, solidarity